okay, we're recording, we're live. Yeah, All right. Good. Rock on, rock stars. <laughs> Love and a happiness. Wait a minute, something I going wrong. All I know Someone is that I have a mint. Three o'clock in the morning. It's the most terrible experience yeah. of my life. Hello. Something I feel like we should just get right off the bat. Um, there's a video circulating online <laughs> of uh, me dancing, twerking, hula twerking, I think. I will have my revenge. <laughs> Authors like to kill off characters. <laughs> so, just so you know, I'm recording this whole thing. So, we're going to be slicing a video of one of the one of the She's going to be slicing a video. I don't know how to do that. Um, okay, we are going to be our topic. Our panel is called. What is it called? What was it called? Anybody know what it is? There you go. Sex, roll, 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 roll. That is what we're going to be talking about. Now, something I think we should get right off the bat, I know you guys have probably been to uh, a few panels and whatnot and you know, had shit get flung at you and it was all joys and games and stuff like that. Ours is a little bit more serious. <laughs> <laughs> Because right okay. we're actually going to be talking about uh, sex, sexual identity, gender identity, fluidity, and in romance novels. So first okay. and foremost, I want to make sure you guys uh, know, um, my name is CJ Kloon. I am a sex positive, homo romantic, asexual. Um, I came out uh, a few months ago, or actually a few weeks ago on a blog post. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing I saw from that when I did come out as an asexual is that people didn't know what that meant. There was a lot of people that didn't understand the term asexual, had never heard the term asexual, and didn't understand how it could actually be a part of a sexual or, or identity. So, I'm TJ Clune, I'm asexual. <laughs> Can y'all hear me without the mic? No. 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 That's what I thought. Okay. How about now? Yes. 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 All right. Um, I'm Abby Rowe. Um, I'm sort of on a spectrum between asexual and not giving a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's I, I think it's important to know that not everyone actually has their. Uh, identity down to the fourth or fifth label, <laughs> like some of us. Um, it's, <laughs> it's okay to not know exactly what you are. I think that's another important um, aspect of, of what we're going to be talking about today. Reading books, writing books, helps people kind of figure out where they fall. And I'm still, I'm still doing that, so it's, it's good to know that, that not everyone is there yet? Hello, everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I am S.A. McCauley, you can call me Sam, and I am a demi romantic bisexual. And I discovered that through reading MM, and writing it has um, been another way to kind of figure out exactly where I was placed. Yes, yeah, so you. It's all your turn. Something I want to say to you guys too, we want this to be as interactive as possible, so if you have questions, don't understand what's going on, just want to say some shit, raise your hand, don't worry about interrupting, we'll call on you, we'd be more than happy to hear what you have to say. So. When can we do that? <laughs> right now. Yeah. 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 You want to start right now? Raise your hand if you have okay, questions. Okay, really quick. Yeah. Um, I'm new to all of this and I'm really excited to be here and see you all and meet such wonderful people. A, can you tell me what A Asexual? Yes, please. It means that I do not experience sexual attraction for the most part. Um, I do not, um, if, if, basically, let's put it this way if I could, I would prefer not having sex at all. Oh, 
I am not a sexual person. I can have sex. I am okay with having sex. I would just prefer not to have it. Um, and I think the point of this panel, a big part of this is going to be, can we, in a genre that's filled with torso covers and you know six packs and 12 inch dicks and stuff like that, <laughs> can we actually have a believable romance without uh, having the necessity for sex in it? Can you take the sex out of the equation and still have a believable romance? But what, one thing we wanted to, to make very clear is that the, the genre itself, reading and writing, how, how many people here have discovered a new term or a new, a, anything new with sexuality or identity that they didn't know before they started reading in this genre? Just a quick follow-up question. How many of you guys actually skim or even skip sex scenes when you're reading a book sometimes? into the plot um, and into the characters that I care about the characters, I will skip over it or I will just not finish the book. Um, but if I care about the I mean, it's, Abby, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Abby, you know what I'm talking about. Um, can you elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn anyway, uh, yeah, um, Well, to elaborate on that point of the plot being important, um, my editor, if if there is a line in one of my sex scenes that doesn't advance the plot somehow, she'll cut it out and yes. trash it and won't yeah. let me put it in. Yeah. So um, I've gotten better at that over the years as opposed to when I first started writing, I thought that it was a necessity to have a sex scene in there and, and it was just there. Um, it often didn't need to be there. If, if you skipped it, you didn't miss anything. And that's not the way it should be in a book or really in life, frankly. But there, that still seems to be the trend. If it, it has to be there no matter what it's for. And I think one of the things that all, all three of us agree on is that it has to be important, and if it's not important, it shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that seems to be the consensus in the crowd as well. I yeah, because you're reading a book that's 200 pages and it has eight sex scenes in it. I mean, yeah. where is yeah. the rest? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, exactly. You know where that dick's gonna go. What about the rest of the story? <laughs> 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 what about the cuddling? Exactly. There you go. <laughs> cuddling is so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. It's the before and after. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, one thing that that I hit a lot is, um, especially in, in the Cut and Run series with Ty and Zane, the characters are bisexual. And that's, it's actually not something you see a lot in the MM genre. It's, it's not something you hear a lot about. And it seems to be that, it, we, were, we were talking earlier, preparing for this, TJ said that it, it seems to be more acceptable to be gay than to be bi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You hear a lot of, well, it's it's not real. You need to pick a side. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the real life you as a girl. But that's real life for bisexual people. That's, that's, that's exactly what I'm, ta I'm talking about in real life. That's what bisexual people hear. Right. And um, it's it's really strange with with Ty and Zane. People consider them gay because they are with. A male partner, and it doesn't matter how many women they talk about in the books; they're they're still not considered bisexual. So that's it's it mirrors life 
very closely, uh, uncomfortably close. And um, it's, I think it's something that this genre especially is changing, but very slowly. And so I just keep writing bisexual characters in my books until people, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think it, it's important to have that representation in there and not, and not in the last couple of years we've heard that word a lot I think it's getting a little overused for for the wrong reasons but it is good for someone who is bisexual and has been told their whole life you need to pick one side or the other to see people like them in books in movies in shows that aren't being told by people in their world that they're wrong. That's like, you hear that a lot coming from the gay community too, that bisexual yeah, people yeah, are. Yeah, are yeah. That, that's that the weirdest thing yeah. for me. You, you, go, you can grow up, go through your life getting, getting ostracized for being gay, but you yourself can't accept you know, mm -hmm. a sexuality like bisexuality because you think that they're, all, they're just sitting on the fence. It's, it's very odd to me. Yeah. Like when my son came out to you know, my husband and I a few years ago, like almost eight years ago or so, and the one thing that I asked him, I said, well, are you sure you're gay or are you bi? I mean, like, you know, which way, you know, which do you prefer, you know? And he's like, no, I'm definitely gay. And I said, well, okay, if that's how you feel, that's not an issue with me. <coughs> but I'm still, I, I don't know whether or not I, Believe he's fully gay, or I think he, uh, or I'm wondering if he's more bi. Like I'm, I'm not sure which way he's leaning, and I'm. Well, I think that should be up to him. Too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think that I think that once he finds out, he'll tell you. Yeah. So I mean, he may think he's gay, he may think he's bi, he may think he's somewhere in between. But I can guarantee you that if you're open and accepting, once he figures it out, he'll tell you. And oh, always my sex to change. Oh yeah, it can go. Oh, sexual identity can change. I mean, if you told me ten years ago that I was going to be standing in front of a group of people saying that I was asexual, I'd be like, "What the hell are you talking about?" So I mean, it it can change. It, it definitely can change. I mean, you can be you could be in your thirties and forties and not really understand what you are yet until you hear a certain term that that kind of rings true for you. So. I think he's actually more towards asexual. It's a good place to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am attracted to mannerisms. I can be attracted. I like the way people talk. I like the way people think. I like uh, sarcasm. Right, but um, I can appreciate somebody's, you know, physical attributes and whatnot. But it's not what I look for. It really doesn't do anything for me. So, but I will say, I mean, yes. Beard porn. I love beards. Beards are good. Beards are wonderful. Got one. Oh, yeah. I think one of the challenges in the MF genre um, is that people can. I've seen more bisexual characters, but they're sort of bisexual, but sort of by imp inference, because it's like, oh, yes, I had a girl. I was married. So, you know, you have a dead wife or a, you know, mm. a, a divorced wife, you know, so there's, there's your. Girl, so it's not part of the character. He's out of the way, point. and then yeah. it's nothing but you know um, uh, gay romance from there. And I think what would be interesting is to see more um, books that actually include a character that has a either physical and or like strong emotional relationship with both a man and a woman in the same book, and it's presented as you know sort of equally valid. But a lot of times it's. There, I see somebody who's bisexual, but you never see one side of the other. Right, but if you think about that too, you see a lot of times um, when, so, say that it is presented like that, say that there's an equal opportunity, there's a guy that has a girlfriend, wife, whatever, you'll see people that write reviews and say, oh my god, there's girly bits in this book, gross, I don't yeah. like this book anymore. Yeah. Because, oh, one star, I don't even like this book anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's a personal <laughs> difference. You can, that's, that's okay to you. That is okay to you, but at the same time, it's, um, it's a choice. Obviously, you're gonna have, you're gonna run into that wall. Still, our our genre, we are, um, we're getting bigger, but I, I'm worried that we're getting bloated a little bit. That we're 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 so used to the same exact thing that that anything, anytime that there's something new that happens, it's kind of seen as you know, 
I don't know if I want to go there and read that. So. And I think also you have to talk about that there is there is some can be some fear on the part of the author of using the word bisexual. Quite honestly, it's not it's not an easy term for a lot of people to say or to think about because they honestly think about a partner that is a cheater, or somebody who can't have a monogamous relationship. Or that's absolutely not the truth for um, people who are bisexual. You know, it can be somebody's truth, but it doesn't mean that it's everybody's truth. So we need to get past that. Yeah. Other question? Yeah. Okay. As a fellow AIDS and writer, um, I just finished and published my book with my special character. Um, and I just had a review, one star, and he says, no sex, only toys. <laughs> but I felt that book was so much easier to write because Bo was me and I was Bo, and I didn't have to force myself to do something I didn't want to do. And I know you just wrote yours, and I'm do you feel the same way? Oh, yeah. It, um, it was actually, honestly, quite liberating to uh, write Gus in How to Be a Normal Person, um, which is out today. Um, <laughs> 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 oh, not two weeks ago. It's cool. It won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it, here's the thing. It, it was, because it was cathartic for me to be able to write a character like that because, it, it, and I honestly think it's going to be interesting to see the reactions from uh, readers when most it comes down to that. Except for that one that just popped up, that most of it has been... <laughs> <laughs> what one that just popped up? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's happening. You know, it's, and we've lost I, I've been, with, I was, I say this book, I've been very blunt with this book. I've, told, I've said up front, there is no sex in this book. There is no sex scenes in this book. It's fate, there's no fate of black. There is no sex. There's talk about sex. That's fine. You can talk about boundaries. There is no sex. So if somebody goes into this book saying, I didn't like it because there was no sex scene. Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. That's the problem right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I, just a weird, I read a book um, a couple of weeks ago that had a, that the whole thing was about an asexual character. Mm -hmm. Blurb said asexual character. Ase so I read it. I was like, oh, this is cool. Let me read see what this was. 25% in, they're having sex, left and right, having sex, left and right. And I'm sitting there going, okay, well, you know, that's up to them. Turned out it was a whole magical dick cure. And uh, uh, I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> I was pissed. <laughs> because that is something that, that I think is a, a, uh, it's a detriment. It is, you know, you, you may be writing, you can write your story however you want, but man, you gotta, you gotta be careful with some of the stuff you're slinging around like that. If you're gonna be telling an asexual character, you do not cure them for anything. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you talked about the gay community as a whole, that they're, well, we are as much prejudiced as, seems to me, as anybody else mm -hmm. sure. about differences, and especially pol political stuff. If you're not, you know, towing the line, you know, you're, you can't be gay. Kind of right. I think I think it came from a. It started maybe from a defensive standpoint that we wanted to. Um, Solidarity. Right. Exactly. You know, we're, we're it's us versus them and whatnot. And it. I think it's morphed into something that's a little. It's getting it's getting very bitchy. <laughs> quite honest. I mean, you got a with with SCOTUS coming out with the gay marriage ruling and whatnot. Then you have you know. What's her nut, Kim Davis, and you know. What's what's her nut? Nut. <laughs> but I, I think that I think that it's still it's still a lot of an us versus them mentality, and it's it's unfortunate that we're living in 2015, and shit like this can still happen. I mean, yeah. our, especially in the U.S., man. That's I mean, that's just it's terrifying to think that there's people like that that can still be out there right now. What's been the response from the gay community for you coming out? Like, have you had negative? Um, <clears throat> You go out of your house enough to you know, <laughs> It has been, I will say it has been ninety-nine point nine percent awesome and wonderful and accepting. There is that point zero one percent that I don't give a flying fuck about because they can go fuck themselves for all <laughs> But um, it has been it has been amazing. It has actually been extraordinary the, the reaction that I received from this. It's uh, there's been a lot of people that have written to me saying um, 
this is something that I have never really thought of for myself, but it makes sense for me that I am this way. And I've been very careful to to respond in that regard, saying, oh, perfect, I'm glad you figured this out about yourself. Because it's just because you, you think you're a certain way doesn't mean that's necessarily what you are. You need to look into it. You need to research. You need to take a look at it. Because it, it could be it could be physical, it could be physiological, it could be something completely different other than this, but it could be. Um, that's why labels suck. Labels <laughs> suck, man. They really, really do. They suck. But I will say, let me, let me, let me say that with a caveat, though. When, when I was able to actually see a label that made sense for me, it really felt like, I felt real. good, man. I felt like there was a, a, a relief, a weight off my shoulders <coughs> that I didn't have to have these expectations that you know, that, that, okay, I'm a gay man, I'm gonna have to have gay sex. So it's, it felt good. Yeah, don't don't always be so quick to label yourself, but find something that works for you. I think that, that sigs nicely into, um, we've gone over asexuality, bisexuality, but there, there are others that, the people like me that are sort of in between and don't know what the hell they're doing, they're, that's one of the things that Sam was gonna talk about. She's got several characters that hit those other points, if you want to. Yeah, um, so demi-romantic, it, you know, it's a term that I apply to myself, but it's one that I think probably a lot of people have no idea what it means and probably have never heard it before, demi-romantic or demisexual. Um, and that idea um, is, you know, there's a there's a character in Ruin Porn, I don't know how many of you have read that book yet, the one that I co-wrote. <laughs> Thank you. The one that I co-wrote with um, Joe Peterson, and there's a character, Richie, in there who is um, pansexual and demisexual as well. And for him, that means that he is um, does not have sexual attraction to anybody else unless there is a level of trust and a strong relationship there. It's not like he can walk down the street and look at somebody and pop a boner. It's not just not what he does. Um, but he is also pansexual. He's not interested. He's not. He doesn't care about the gender of the person that he falls in love with. And I think both of those are also, are important as well to understand the pan side and the demi side of him. Um, and for me, writing the Borders War series was um, an incredibly enlightening experience. I'm five books into that, and the main character, Merck, is one that has taken, um, taken over my head. And it took me until the end of the fifth book to have a light bulb moment where I went, oh my God, no wonder he hasn't fallen in love with our niece because he is dummy. He needed to get to know him as a character before, or as a person before he was able to fall in love with him. Um, and those identities are ones, the, the dummy side is one that I identify heavily with. And um, it's one that I would like to see more in MM because we have a lot of going straight to the sex. Um, and I think there are a lot of people that are not interested in going straight to the sex pieces of it. They want to see the relationship. They want to see the building of trust yeah. and confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What, what, was, what was the thing you found, the, the definitions of all the different, uh, do you remember it? I can find it on my text messages. We'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it was funny too. But I, I think, while she's looking it up, I think we should just apologize, or I should apologize for myself. I, I, if you get offended by cursing, you should probably not. Not even. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was doing that, so if, if you do. I mean, the thing that you said about sex, though, where if you, you know, if you've got the two characters that are getting to know each other. Now, I've done that for like eight chapters in a book, and then all of a sudden they fall into bed, and they're like, oh, there just wasn't enough sex in this book for me. And I'm like, oh, It's frustrating. Yeah, yeah it has, you it. either do or you don't. It, there is there's a very fine line between too much and not enough that I don't think any author can hit. No, there's no it's there's just, no perfect there's, place for it. There, there's there's too many too many readers with different preferences, and I, I mm -hmm. think frankly you just got to write you. Yeah. And people who will like it will like it. People who don't will move on. All right, so I found it. So I'm I I don't. I don't know who this is that tweeted it originally, but I sent this screenshot to both Charles and Abby when we were talking about this. So this is uh, Eerie Hawk from Twitter who posted this originally. So this is definitions of different sexualities. Straight is fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Gay is fuck this. 
Bi is fuck you and also you. <laughs> Pansexual is fuck everything. <laughs> Demisexual is fuck you in particular. <laughs> and ace is fuck no. <laughs> That would be Only great. Down one book, and I like specifically. Like have the in head romance, like have the person he, be with a guy first. He was with a guy first for a long time, and then now he's he's you know with a woman. But that is like almost done. Yeah. Has has it been done? Yes, one book. One book. Uh, <laughs> about butterfly tattoo. Yeah. I know. Well, I'll give you a Wrote a really long review. Yeah, she she said she has a list. She'll give us a recommendation. I'll give you the recommendation. I want more. <laughs> but anyway, so so when I read um How to Be a Normal Person, I spent like two days on the Avon forum, uh, just reading like all people in relationships with asexuals and from a sexual point of view. And uh, like I literally most of the hours just trying to get wrap my brain around it. And what I found was kind of interesting is that a lot of people identify as asexual are kind of like scornful towards sexuality mm -hmm. and like the needs of sexual people. And so I, you know, from writing a character that's in a relationship with the ace. I feel like that would be a big hurdle, you know, like having them be compatible. I don't know where I'm going. But <laughs> <laughs> I had a point in my head but, and then but I stood up and point. I started shaking. <laughs> <laughs> it went downhill. That's but, the point of all of the sexualities though, right? You know, you're trying to find yeah. two people that are ultimately compatible right. so that they have their happily But when ever. you say you're like sex positive, I found that that, that interesting like a distinction in the world of asexual well there is because they're sex positive and they're sex repulsed yeah. and there's sex repulsed people that's don't true like that sex, sex repulsing was also something interesting to yeah. me and what i what i was curious about is like i don't have a problem understanding people that are anti you know asexual being in a relationship but people that are don't like touching at all being in a relationship in a romantic relationship so mm -hmm. people that don't even like hugging or any sort of touching so i i sort of wanted to get your feeling on that. Like, how does that... I don't like to be touched. I don't. Okay, I've, I've, I've never liked to be touched. I'm and sorry, I'm just rambling. No, I, I, I just want to go to It's just yeah, it's they left my brain, so. But it's, I mean, that's something I think a lot of people know about me, is please don't touch me. <laughs> but okay. it, it never really had much of an effect um, when I liked my husband. All <laughs> 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 you know, but, um, I think it just depends on individual personality. I mean, there there are some people like these two touch me all the time, and they don't get hit anymore. But so you can be sexual and just not like touching, and it's just totally. Yeah, separate. I mean, I, I think I don't know. Th there's this, there's a spectrum. That's why they call it the spectrum because right. there's there are people who are very cuddly and and would rather you know only be touched by you know who, whoever will cuddle them and then there are people like me who don't don't fucking touch me and i think that it it people make it work if they if you want to make it work with someone you make it work uh, it, i think it would be what you were saying uh, a story from point of view of the partner yeah that would be an interesting take on it right okay. thank you that makes sense. yeah <laughs> so the Twitter answer about fuck it, fuck that, and fuck everyone else already mm -hmm. partially answered my question, but in a more scientific way, all <laughs> these uh, definitions of asexual and antisexual, where do they come from? Are they like medical definitions, psychological definitions? So where did you, for example, learn about it for the first time? I don't think we're qualified to answer <laughs> that. <laughs> because, because for me, like you're using your first I don't know. Like, so yeah. Because, because for me, I, quite honestly, I found out about being Demi through Tumblr. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that was the first time I heard the term, and I looked at it and I went, this makes complete and utter sense. But if I hadn't been on Tumblr looking at porn, I wouldn't have been. <laughs> I think that, that for me, um, honestly, I thought something was wrong with me. 
I, I, I mean, I've had sex, I've had fun good sex, but it's not, it didn't really do something for me. So honestly, I thought there was something wrong with me. Um, I went to a doctor, got my testosterone levels tested, and I was perfectly fine there. And so I honestly, what it came down to was I Googled, why don't I like having sex? Why, why am I like, and I found asexuality.org. This is, and as she said, uh, avn.org. Um, and I was able to, there's all these message boards with all these a people that just, that fall under some part of the asexuality spectrum that I was able to talk to and I was able to converse with. And it's just, it was this light bulb going off and it said, oh, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I need. These are my people. And, you know, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was good for me, so. Well, I was just going to make a comment for people who are interested. A lot of these terms have actually been created by people within the asexual mm -hmm. movement. And there's a great book by one of the people who is part of the AVEN network mm -hmm. called The Invisible Orientation, yeah. mm -hmm. An Introduction to Asexuality, that goes over all of these terms and what they mean to people and how they fit within the larger asexual spectrum. That That's a really good resource that you, a lot of public libraries have that you can get that can better explain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, hold on real quick. One other thing I wanted to talk about too, uh, you know, we've already gone over asexuality a lot, but one thing I wanted to bring up too is something that we don't see a whole lot often, um, maybe it, not, not in leads, I should say, are transgender characters. Mm -hmm. We do not see transgender characters in leads. And that's something I think is, is um, something I think it, it needs to be brought more to the forefront. We had Cory Cory in The Art of Breeding. Uh, who is identified as bi-gendered or gender fluid, um, and uh, I plan on making them the uh, lead character in the sequel in the third book in the Tell Me Truth series. So, you know, um, yeah. we, I, I think the the uh, it's a, a important part of of the MM romance genre not to just entertain, but I think we should also be able to teach. I think we should teach, to, you know, impart our knowledge. And do it in a in a in a safe way. I, I, I think that um, there's been a, a big lack of transgender characters in, in in fiction, but a lot in MM fiction. And you know what? It's it's. I, I can understand how there might be hesitation. There's people may not. Oh yeah, I have that recording. <laughs> <laughs> like right at us. <laughs> I don't think it's recording anymore. Really well. Just talk. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's your point. Um, I think that that with uh, uh, I think that there's a big stigma there. I think there's a big stigma when it comes to transgender characters because it, I think a lot of it comes from the fact that people will be thinking, okay, there's, they're just transvestites. Or, you know, I don't want to read about a guy in a dress. You know, you know, having sex wearing women's clothing, something like that. I think it's it's a it's a mistake. That, that I think that should be more acknowledged. I think we should Absolutely. see the rise of, of more transgender characters, not just in, in secondary character positions. I think that they need to be brought and have their own stories told too. We got a couple more? Okay, yeah. Go ahead. But you know what, we, we got you, so it's okay to come back to you, because I got some people in the back, yeah. Um, I didn't have the vocabulary to describe it at the time, but it turns out that one of the characters from the first book I ever published was a biromantic demisexual. And one bit of feedback I got was that they didn't believe that he'd gone without having sex for 10 years. You know, he was 10 years from his last relationship before he met the other romantic lead. And I wonder, is it is it that our genre kind of suffers this queer as folk syndrome where men are portrayed as this hypersexual animal that always has to be banging something? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it is, yeah, definitely. I think it's with, with you said it best, the queer as folk syndrome. I mean, when that show came on, it was revolutionary for what it showed. It was very frank and, and graphic with this depiction of sexual relationships, but it also treated every character like a whore. So um, I think that um, or on top of that, then you had at the same time, it was uh, Will and Grace, where every character was a fruity sidekick. So, <laughs> well, and yeah. it's easier to dismiss um, somebody when you can just say, you know, oh, you know, they're a slut. One extreme or the other. How about the new one, How to Get Away with Murder? I'm sorry? The characters on How to Get Away with Murder. Oh, my God, I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it Thursday, so no, nobody tell me what happened. <laughs> yeah. This is actually for anybody in the 
the room. I work with an individual who's transmasculine and in a relationship with a woman, and they are looking for literature about, um, and it can be fiction or nonfiction about themselves, and if anybody has any suggestions. I do, and I'll give them to you later. Oh, look at that. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, yes. So, um, as cities and states are starting to pass ordinances about protecting um, the gay community, mm -hmm. and they have anti-discrimination laws against um, gay and homosexuals, they're, they're still leaving off the transgender. They are. And I think we as a community right. need to say that's not enough. Mm -hmm. yeah, I completely you know, agree. Right. I agree. And I think that, you know, we need to be paying more attention to that. Yeah. And not saying, oh wow, we've made great progress because we have and stopping because we haven't gotten far enough. Well, it, I, I was reading on um, on CNN. There was an article about they showed a video about a a mom giving her transitioning child the uh, the, the injections, the T injections, and um, how happy the kid was. And it was awesome. You know, this kid was crying. She, she was so happy that this was going on. And I read down in the comments, oh. people, people. Are, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're talking about how a 13-year-old has no idea of who they are, so therefore, shame on the mother. It's abuse. It's child abuse. A child should be taken from their house. If a person is born as a gender, they should be that gender for the rest of their life. And how could a 13-year-old know that? And I'm like, who the fuck are you to say that? Yeah. And you even just out of which restroom they're supposed to use. And yeah. Let them yeah. pick their own restroom. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Back. I think it depends on which country, because like, I live in the Netherlands. Yes. And we with us, it's aired on television and everything. Mm -hmm. We have children speaking up with their mothers and their fathers or whatever. And if I see some of my best friends here in America are transgender, and they still hide even on social media, mm -hmm. they will not even come out because they're transgender and are feeling ashamed mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it. But like in my country, it's it's pretty normal to be talk about. And even like I said, even children are on television trying to edu educate and understand that. See, it's, it's, it's strange how, how we live in such a melting pot that, that we have all these ideals that, that clash, and then there's places that are so much more progressive mm -hmm. than we are here in the States, and it's really unfortunate because we, we try to be the forefront in so many things, and we're lacking in so many things. So many things. So many things. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is, if anybody's interested, on um, pbs.org, and watch it online. It's uh, through Frontline is Growing Up Trans. It's the very recent, um, yes. has, I, I want to say yes. trend, but it's that trend of very young children identifying as transgender. And oh, as I have jazz. Pretty in the medicines jazz. that they're using. It's set out of the uh, Lurie's Children's Hospital mm -hmm. in Chicago. They have an, um, a dedicated unit there that is just for transgender. Uh, children and teens, and um, it's a really, it's a really interesting show. Okay, very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm mom of a trans, a transgender kid. Uh huh. Um, uh, she is 18, and um, I. She's mm -hmm. taking hormones, mm -hmm. and it's like it's like super cool, and um. It's it's like it's been it's been difficult, but it's like um, she's gonna have surgery. She's going to the University of Oregon, and um, she's gonna have surgery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's and scary but cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm a single mom, um, so I do everything, and um, yeah, I'm like incredibly proud. Good. into the kids don't have anything to read. They need to have something to read. Yeah, it's that piece of representation matters. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so when she Wait was like, young, she didn't have anything to read. So, anyway. Well, hopefully we'll get there. That's, that's the main reason that, that we're talking about this, is because all of these different points that we pit, you know, they're, they're vastly unrepresented in fiction, and people need to see themselves. And that's that. That's really 
the main reason we wanted to talk about it because frankly I'm I'm really pleased that the majority of the room knew what we were talking about we yeah. we were wondering if we would have to give definitions and stuff so I mean it's I think it's extremely important what we're doing we we've hit time um, we were going to leave time for for a little Q&A but well, so let's, let's put it like this. Um, if you want to stay, because I don't think no, there's anything. We've what? got 13 minutes. We've got 13 oh, we've got 13 minutes, minutes now. Yeah. Okay, so we were gonna, I think we're going to, uh, you want to do just a couple more quick questions? Yep. And then we can yeah. try to do that one. Okay. Okay. Um, I, <clears throat> I'm 38. I'm a virgin. Um, for a long time, I thought something was wrong with me because I had no desire. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, I, so today you made me really <laughs> <laughs> if you make me cry, it's <laughs> I think I am definitely um, demi romantic, but I think I am asexual because, um, but I always felt like something was wrong with me because people be like, "You're 38, why aren't you married?" Well, I just don't have that desire, you know, and. And that is okay. And <laughs> it is totally okay. Um, so I just want to say. Thank you for this, and I'm, um, I don't feel like something's wrong with me anymore. Now my best scares over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. How does, how, you three up there are successful and, and have reached a great level, but how do the star reviews or the publishers affect what you publish or what you write, or, I mean, I, um, I think we have a lot more freedom. It, for, but for somebody new coming up, what kind of um, pressures would there be from the publishing industry? Well, you to need to find the right publisher. Yeah. Okay. Then because, you know, there's, there's, I, I, could I have written an asexual book as my first book? Yeah, probably. But I would have needed to find the right publisher to do that with. There's, and unfortunately, you know, um, they may be more of a boutique firm kind of a situation, but um, I, I think that uh, it really just comes boils down to you have to find the right publisher, because there are going to be publishers out there that are, that are willing to go that direction. I mean, there's publishers that actively seek um, asexual, transgender books and, and whatnot, and it, it is, uh, you just have to make sure you're matched with the right publisher. Well, and I think, it's, I think it's worthwhile to say as well, too, that publishers are going to keep on publishing what sells. Mm -hmm. And and what sells is what the readers are buying. So if what you're interested in are books that have less sex or that have a diverse amount, diverse characters in there, then continue to buy those, continue to support them, leave reviews, contact the publishers and let them know that's what you want to read. Um, that makes a difference. Uh, my my very first published, it wasn't it wasn't even a novella. It was maybe eight thousand words. It was in an anthology, eight thousand words and. The publisher wrote back and said, "Can you put a sex scene in this?" And I said, "Where?" <laughs> and I refused to do it. I said, "If you don't want it the way it is, you know, don't don't take it." And that I was shocked because I I thought that the story was more important than the sex, and the publisher disagreed. But they did take it because, quite frankly, they were desperate for those eight thousand. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think starting out new, if I um, had been less stubborn, I probably would have done it, thinking that that's what I needed to do. And I think a lot of people fall into that. They think, well, this is the only way I'm going to get my work published. I'll do whatever they ask for. And then that's, that's where the trend comes from. That's why so many books now and so many authors think they have to have that sex scene. And, you, you just have to be, if you don't, if it doesn't fit, then don't put it in there. Like yes. that, wow. That, is <laughs> that came out way wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that came out very wrong. Right. Right. Very right. My skills are good. Like. <laughs> what, we, what we can do now is, I, I know this is kind of, this has been really good talk, it's been kind of heavy. But what we can do now is we can talk about if you guys have questions about our books. You can do, we can ask, you can do questions about anything. Well, I have questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a question, but I have to say my favorite sex scene was with Paul when he was, you know, strutting towards the bed. And he fell. <laughs> 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 
I think I think sex can be sexy, but I think it can also be really fucking awkward. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're having sex with somebody for the first time, it's gonna be awkward, man. It is gonna be awkward. So I think I, it's I, more awkward most times than it is sexy. You're right. No, yeah. sure. so that's why I, I wanted to put a little bit of realism in that because I'll be quite honest, it's pretty much me. Going <laughs> I try to be. If I'm in a situation, or if I ever had been in a situation like that, I would try to be sexy, but it is not. Sexy. <laughs> it's like you know, unzipping your pants and getting your dick. Right, no, exactly. exactly. Oh. Or you're actually tripping out of your okay. pants like I did. That's actually based on a real story. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's reality. reality. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, I'm so short back here. If you're with Horn, can you tell us what we're getting next in the and all that? Yes, so um, there will be a second book, To Ruin Porn, um, and it is, it's titled Two Way, um, and for people who have read Ruin Porn, I think you know who it's going to be about, um, and it's going to be angsty as fuck. <laughs> so um, Joe and I have done a little bit of planning with it. Um, we have the first sentence of the book written. <laughs> Literally one sentence. Um, <laughs> it's a really good sentence. <laughs> Solid sentence. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, you know, hopefully early next year. I don't know, Joe. Sure. Why sure. Not? Why not? We'll go with that. Early one next year. One sentence a month. You'll get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two questions for you, Sam. One, your name drop. Uh, yes. Yes. She <laughs> owes me Baker Jocks. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. Okay, um, so I know I've said this before probably to other people, but I have a second book planned. Um, it is titled Somebody I Used to Blow. <laughs> yes, I know, it's still the same title. Still the same title. Um, and it will be Micah's book. Um, so yeah, that that I just have to get through a couple of other things. The Borders War, quite honestly, getting through the Borders War and getting those published in January is going to free up an amazing amount of my time because that's dominated my last year and a half, quite honestly. And then the other one, um, Play doesn't really need a sequel, but if you wrote one, I would... Which one? Um, she hadn't said it yet. I hadn't said it yet. Sorry. I'm like, what? Look at that. Come down there. Embarrassing. Where would we Oh, yeah. Um, so, you need a sequel, but if you wrote one, like, I would be I'm sorry. I didn't oh, hear thank you. <laughs> no, um, Where Wishes Go, oh, the, the one, one that just came, just came out, out oh, okay. two weeks yeah. ago. Um, so Where Wishes Go, I actually have about 15 extra scenes already written. Um, there won't be another book, but I will be releasing those scenes as freebies. Ooh. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, well, then it keeps running. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, yeah, great. Um, will the rest of Cut and Run ever come out on audio? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. At yes. least one of them is up for pre order now. Oh, okay. I, and talking off. Yeah. I think there's a third one that I, I don't know. They don't tell me anything, but there's they, they were all contracted together. They're okay. producing them bam, bam, one after the other. So, so soon. In yeah. the next, I would say maybe 12 to 18 months, all of them should be. At least available for pre order, if okay. not out. What's coming next from you, Evan? Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next release is December 21st, it's the next Sidewinder book. Um, and after that, I'm kind of I'm taking a little bit of a break right now. Um, I'm working on a couple of things, but there's nothing. Um, I have one sentence of. Several, several. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there will be a Sidewinder four that doesn't have a name yet. Um, there's one I think I talked about two years ago in Atlanta. It was a Christmas story that I was working on. I added about 100 words to that one. <laughs> 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 I know. Excited. Um, but I, I'm, I am kind zaned out. I, oh. well, it, okay. it, it, the, the last book just about killed me with, with stress and nerves. So um, I'm trying to switch to something new and different just to 
give myself some new ideas because it, it, if you work on anything for too long, it's gonna it's gonna go stale. Thank um, you. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm I I'm trying to to do something that's a little out of my comfort zone, and for me, that's contemporary. That doesn't have weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think your exact quote when you were telling me about it is that you pick you start writing and you think that something is going to be really sweet and then suddenly there's a gun. <laughs> That, that's what happens. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, that, that Christmas story will probably be the next one that I finish because there's no chance of a gun in that one. <laughs> but um, I, I'm trying to do different, some different things just to uh, keep it interesting. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, just um, regarding the audiobooks, um, I think now, Stars and Stripes is up for pre-order. Touch and Go, Shock and Awe. Okay, so the Touch oh. and Go is out now. That that's new. I yeah, think. so there's there's three up for. So they're, they're getting them probably by Christmas. Then they'll all be at least available. Okay, pre-order. so let's see, fifteenth of December, Stars and Stripes, same date, Touch and Go, and eighteenth of November, Shock and Awe. Okay, well, that's all for UK. Girl. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't think you, Sam, you don't have the audiobooks out yet, do you? Um, no, I do not. So this is more for IUTJ. Have you guys been surprised at how popular the audiobooks are? Oh. Let me tell you about the freaking audiobooks. <laughs> 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 I, I have fielded at least 200 questions about audiobooks over the last couple of years because Riptide wasn't producing them. Mm-hmm. People are obsessed over the. Yes. Yep. Well, yes. Okay. I've never. <laughs> I refuse to listen to them because I've been asked so many questions about them. But people love them. Yeah. yeah. They have and I, I understand that you know if, if you've got a long commute, if you've got something going, you can pop in that audiobook and listen to it. But I um I have the the tracks, or I think it's Cut and Run that I was sent. It got uploaded to my my iPad and. Uh, started playing on my car radio one day and I, I could not hit that stop button back. <laughs> the same exact way. Hearing hearing it's, your own car yeah, radio no. is weird. I was in the car by myself blushing furiously because they read the title page to my book. Like, I'm not gonna listen to Absolutely anything. Not. But people yeah. love them, so I you know, thank you for buying them. Yeah, no, it's it's cool. I've been actually surprised how how big of a market there was for, for audiobooks. Yeah. 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 Well yeah. and that's that's just it. You you find you find that there's there's almost like Groupies that follow certain narrators because they can't they can't I mean I just I just I just was auditioning the narrator for the lightning struck heart and (laughs) I had I had one guy play Gary as a gay George W. Bush. Did you read the book? What's happening here? <laughs> and, like, it was full on gay George Bush. And I was like, this is not okay. <laughs> so I, 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 I did not pick that up. Well, I was not. Books a lot at work, and I can't listen to yours at work anymore because I start laughing in the middle of work. I think I think a good narrator makes the book so much better. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, 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 tell me it's so real is listened to about every three months. Yeah, Michael Leslie, who, de- who yeah. did Tell Me It's Real, I've already locked him down for the uh, sequel, Queen of the Home of Yeah, good, excellent. Uh, we've, we've hit the official end time. If anyone needs to be anywhere, go anywhere, then. Is it part three? Thank you very much.